If you are just getting started with controls programming, or you have programmed before but have yet to program a Delta controller, this tutorial will show you where the programs reside on the Delta controller, how they are created and edited, and what tools are available. For this tutorial, I will be accessing and programming a Delta controller using my IntelliWeb Tech license. The controller, a DSC-633, has been wired to a Delta DTD, which stands for Delta Training Device, which is basically a small fan coil unit. I recommend learning and testing programs on a similar setup rather than learning on a live system or a customer site. Once you connect to a Delta network and select the controller, in the network tree, all the available objects in the controller will be displayed on the right. Delta Controls created a dedicated object to contain programs called the PG or Program Object. Every Delta controller can contain a program. From the factory, most Delta controllers do not have any programs in them, so you got to make them. To find out if there are any programs in a controller, do a search in the search bar for PG. This controller does not have any programs yet so we will make one. PG objects are created the same way as any other object is created in a Delta controller. The first PG object that needs to be created has to have an object instance of 1. PG1 plays an important role in Delta controllers. We can basically create as many programs as we need, which allows us to set up modular programs in the controller. But PG1 is the only program the Delta controller will automatically look for and execute, so it gets used in a special way. Let's open an existing PG1. Notice it simply has a list of call commands. All the other programs get called from PG1. As we go forward and create more programs, we need to remember to come back to PG1 and call our new programs and then they will get executed. We will leave the PG1 that we created empty for now and create a second program, PG2. Once that is created, let's look around the program environment and see what tools we have available. Here I have inserted some lines of code from our previous tutorial into a second PG object. Note the first line which has been automatically been made green. Lines that are green are comments. Program comments are inserted by putting the two forward slashes at the beginning of the comment. As you start to program, here is one important lesson from the original GCL Plus programming guide. It reads, Commenting your code in a conscientious manner may be the single most important task in programming GCL Plus. Comments allow yourself and others to quickly understand any program even if written in the distant past. If a program is commented properly, it is easy to find where a particular task is performed. Comments are placed throughout programs to explain the purpose of a program or section of code and to write down information like at what date a code change was made. Comment lines are ignored and passed over by the controller, but they do take up memory, so keep them brief and to the point. As you add lines of code to build your program, line numbers are automatically added to the left in the area referred to as the gutter. We will come back to this area once our program is saved to the controller. In the toolbar, the first two buttons increase and decrease the font size. Next is the undo and redo buttons. Next is a find button, handy when you have a large program you need to sift through. And then there's a find and replace option, this is handy when you want to copy and paste programs from previous jobs. The next button is Auto Indent. Pressing it correctly aligns all statements in the if statements in your program. This is particularly handy when the program contains nested if statements. Next is a checkbox to enable and disable auto completion. Autocompletion works by entering a statement keyword like if. Next, press the space bar and the editor adds the appropriate syntax. This is a helpful feature in providing the complete framework for the statement. In particular, this is useful when you're starting out programming so that you get all the words in the right spot. Moving over to the right side is the mode button, 
which allows you to view the program either by object reference, like BI1, or object name, like Switch1. The Difference button brings up a code difference window, which displays both the program you are editing and the program with the same name, which is actually running in the controller. The Retrace button is used once the program is installed, and it is used to find out which lines of code are being executed by the controller at a given moment. Which lines are being executed by the controller is indicated by a green check mark in the gutter. And Validate is used to analyze the program's syntax for errors as you're building your program. Additionally, there is a Byte Counter, and also halt and run to suspend operation of the program. Back to the top left, there is a location to indicate if the program is running, idle, or waiting, or halted. And finally, the details tab where the program name can be edited and a description can be added. There are a few other major tools available to us to program GCL Plus in IntelliWeb that are not available in the previous software OrcaView. We will dive into these in the next tutorial.